Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are those who would say that the energy of the channel, that is to say of the entity being channeled, comes in too quickly. They would say that a human has to adjust. It should take more time. And they would point to this and say, this is proof that it's not being done correctly. And what they're seeing is truly the shift. There is a paradigm shift that includes your relationship to yourselves, to spirit, to the creator, to the things of meditation, of healing, of channeling. There is a quickening of spirit. And in the process, these things, which often took a long time in the past, are taking far less time. You might ask, what kind of preparation does my partner do when he is behind the curtains before he comes out? Would there be an intense time of preparation, of exercise, of mentalness, of focus? And the answer is, his preparation is sitting down. That's all. But what he knows is this. If the creator is inside, there's no reason to call any energy from any other place. And in the chair, for just the moments that he sits, without any exercises, without any deep breathing, he simply calls upon what has always been and opens a profound door that he has allowed to be created steps aside and that is what channeling is indeed what you hear now is the voice of my partner in his culture in his reality through his filter converting the best he can an interdimensional message into his own language which is linear even this moment he has stepped aside listening to himself speak and if you ask him what it is like to channel he'll say that he is bathed in love while he watches himself speak he will tell you other truths and that is while he channels it does not a takeover it is a meld and everyone in the room who channels who heals who meditates, who reads for another, will tell you the same thing. There is no takeover of the human spirit. There is only the completion of what is already there. This completion becomes a remembrance. And the energy therefore given is one of allowance. How far can you open the door? to let truth in. It's important that you understand this. For what follows in this short amount of time we have together is history. All that I'm going to tell you now is indeed the way it happened. There are no metaphors that are going to be given to you to make you try to figure out things. I will be as straightforward and I ask my partner to be clear and go slowly. What he gives at this moment, he has given a portion of before. But he knows how this works, that sometimes we warm him up, giving him a partial message to be delivered at another time and then a full message at a later time. This is as close to the full message as he's ever got. 
and it is profound and at the same time there will be those who listen who will walk away shaking their heads and they will say it is a fantasy it could not be and so this is the warning we give you that what follows may not necessarily line up to anything you've been told it may necessarily not line up with the logic in your mind of what you've expected or what historians have told you or what geologists have told you and yet it is presented as truth anyway and so I will say one time yet again there'll come a day when my partner is no longer on the planet and the books will be revealed to be true for your science will eventually validate many things that now seem odd and strange only strange because of the paradigm that you have set yourself into so squarely and so solidly that when you hear things that are different they're unbelievable it's about creation there's only one reason I bring this to you and you'll see what a you'll see why it is and so now my partner I will open the door to this story and I want you to give it clearly I want you to give it succinctly and I want you to pause where there should be pauses if you do not understand Take a look, if you wish, at the creation stories all over the world. Modern ones, ancient ones, they all have something in common. They have an energy coming to the planet to those who have already been evolved and called human beings. Nowhere do you have a creation story that starts with humans in development. It all happens after they are human beings. An acknowledgement of an evolvement biologically of the human brain to the point at which it can receive the spiritual essence of creation. All of the belief systems on the planet will give you their version of this. But in the metaphors that are given then, you still can see that it starts with a human who is ignorant of God. Somehow, some way, there is the implantation of the essence of something they don't have. The divine energy goes inside and suddenly they're aware. And in the metaphors that are given over and over, you will see this. There's an ignorance to awareness. There is no time frame given for it simply happens as it does. You might say it is the beginning of the human God relationship. And you'd be right. And so we tell you, dear human beings, that all that is, that has been presented regarding that attribute is true, and it is so. And now let us add to it some anthropology. My partner doesn't know what is happening here, for this is part of his presentation tomorrow we're going to usurp that and give you the rest of the story biological evolution is complete the way you think it works is the way it works over a great deal of time and a period 
human beings developed as human beings just like all of the other kinds of mammals they were distinct individual and they had variety there was a time on this planet approximately a hundred thousand years ago if you could visit the earth you would see many kinds of human beings up to 27 kinds all over the planet not necessarily in one spot would there be the variety of this kind but there would be five kinds here four kinds there nine times kinds over there and this is not unusual for if you look at the logic of evolution you will see that it creates variety and it does so for survival so that if one kind perished the other kind would remain this is nature at its best and the humans were no exception and this is not disputed even the time frame of this in your science is not disputed or they will show you the different kinds of human beings that were all around about that time and yet if you look around today contrary to the way evolution works and even logic there is only one kind today oh there are many shapes there are some skin colors some facial differences but we are speaking of kinds of humans the variety of which you see in other mammals there were the kinds with tails without tails short and tall there were the kinds whose heads looked different whose torsos were slightly different who markings were different ask the anthropologists they will tell you and yet somehow some way all of that went by the wayside and all over the planet counterintuitive to all evolutionary forces only one single kind of human emerged all over the planet this took place all at once all in the same time frame and that dear ones is when in all appropriateness this planet was visited by the Pleiadians and this particular story does not sit well for those who do not want to think for a moment that spirituality was seeded from the stars they want it to be the miracle of God who came in a godly form and touched humanity in a certain way and changed them forever and I will tell you that if that is the metaphor you wish to have that is fine for in a sense that is exactly what took place but there is a system here there's a system that is greater and grander than you think a system that involved a planetary visitation by those from the seven sisters graduate they were by tens of thousands of years they were intent they were on giving this planet the seed that would change your DNA and awaken humanity to the Creator inside and that's the way it was done and they did it worldwide over a long period of time longer than you think and in the process they seeded only one kind of human being the kind that you see now and all the other varieties passed from the scope of what you see today for only one kind received the DNA that you now have that you look at the human genome which we described last week precious it is quantum it is misunderstood it is how could you have three billion pieces of chemistry in one DNA ladder and only five percent of them seem to do anything at all doesn't that tell you something about what DNA must be different than you think it's not linear the chemistry doesn't make sense less than five percent creates 23,000 genes and the rest seemingly does nothing 
And I want to tell you what the rest is. For most of it, laying there ready all the time to be imbued with the energy of the, of the Creator, the rest of it is, is the quantum you. The pieces and parts that are the Akashic record of your lives, of what you call the higher self, of, of the guides, the angels themselves, the portal that is in you that allows even for channeling. <clears throat> That's what's in your DNA. And it took a long time for this to take place and it was worldwide. You can look for this. There was a revelation given to my partner, something he didn't know, and he had to see for this channel to be given in this way this night. And his cells vibrate now with the truth of it and the appropriateness of the synchronicity of it all. For just a few days ago, he was in Uluru. They're depicted in the indigenous there with their version of the seven sisters. Presented in a metaphoric way, it's said that they flew to the heavens clearly. You'll find the same story in Africa. You'll find it in Sweden. You'll find it in Greece. You'll find it in Hawaii. The more you look, the more it is there. At a time when the planet could not communicate with one another, when communication on a worldwide scale was tens of thousands of years away. And yet it's written on the walls and the caves of the indigenous, all about the seven sisters. Think of this. Is it proof? Is it a coincidence? Do not challenge your logic here. Instead, we ask you to go inside and, and discern. And we've said this before and we'll say it again. In all appropriateness, this was done. It was not a conquering energy. Your ancestors are from the stars. Appropriate in love, on purpose. And they're still there. And if there's a policy at all on this free channel, this, this free planet of, of, of choice, we tell you what it is, that that is, there is no interference here. There's no interference by angelic forces. There's no interference by those from, from the stars. You are left alone to vibrate the way you choose, to shift the way you choose, and to vibrate this planet the way you choose. The reason there is so much activity now, the reason I sit before you with this story is because you have chosen to vibrate higher. And I would like to tell you that there are planets all over this universe who see what you're doing. I'll leave it at that. You think you're alone, you're not. You think what you're doing here in this room, when you hold the light and you leave, you think it is only seen by you or perhaps those neighbors no, having no concept of the quantumness of your light and how it shines in a quantum way way past this solar system. There are places all over the universe who know who you are and see the light that you are changing here. This is a profound place to be, this earth. There really is a reason for you to be here. It really is. In the creation scheme, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in the north, it was a huge mountain. Now here's where it gets geologically challenging. <laughs> the time frame that we will give you approximately 
40,000 years ago. The Pleiadians had done their job. There was only one kind of human left on the planet. They were seated with awareness. Awareness that would take them wherever it would go with free consciousness and free choice. Let me tell you, dear one, if you want to see something startling, go to the places on this planet and there are still some left who have never been touched by civilization as you know it. Go into the jungles, perhaps, of New Guinea. Go to these places where there is no association with what you would call modern civilization and find out what they believe. And then sit back and smile, for you'll find it's Metaphysics 101. <laughs> they believe the Creator inside. They have the metaphors for the creation story. They believe that they are their own ancestors. They believe in the evolution of lives that come back. It's within their animals. It's within the earth. It's within them. There is a system that revolves and circles around life that is profound. They don't worship anything but their own lineage. Hmm. It ought to tell you something. Who's modern and who's not? Hmm? In the middle of the North Pacific, one of the largest mountains on the planet, measured from the bottom to the top, higher than any mountain existing today. It is the mountain you today call the islands of Hawaii. And that is where a community was planted. Far, far away from any influences of any other continent. The seven sisters put together Lemuria. The reason we're giving you this information is for you to see how this worked and why. To look at the coincidences that are here and then to apply them to where we sit today. For I know where I am. And we've waited for this message to be given till now. Lumori was unique. For all the mountain, although the mountain was large, the community was small and that is to say that where the Pleiadeans seeded all the other parts of the earth, they expanded out many, many languages, many, many tribes, many ideas, but not in Hawaii. They were captured on an island, and a small one at that, really called Hawaiian Mountain. When you look at even the size of the mountain back then, it didn't compare to any continent didn't compare to this one, this island nation I sit in now. Small it was in comparison, but far larger than you see now. Geologically, 40 to 50,000 years ago, the water level of the planet was approximately 120 meters lower than it is now. That exposed a portion of the mountain in a grand way, but that was not why the mountain was high or what, it, what existed then. And I will tell you yet again what it was. It's an attribute that you will discover eventually was there. Oddly, this attribute will be proven to geologists as they look at some of the topography on other planets that exist today. There was a hot spot, and there still is. 40,000 years ago is not significant geologically. Not much changes then. And yet there was one, a big one. This hot spot, which is volcanic activity under the mantle of the earth, had pushed this portion of the earth up very gently as a bubble over a long period of time and raised that mountain. It was almost fully exposed back then. It was the push of the lava underneath the hot spot. Some of it was released through the volcanoes of all of the tops 
of that mountain which are today the mountains and the, the islands of Hawaii. It never blew its top like some kind of mountains because those volcanic mountains are different. Ask a geologist. They ooze out. Their eruptions are not dramatic. They pour forth in a way that builds new land instead of blowing up. And they begin to do that. Lemuria is the longest single civilization ever existing on the planet and probably will remain that over 10,000 years in existence they learned to work together they had government they even had their version of science they had temples of rejuvenation no place on earth had this for everywhere else everywhere else it's scattered but not there they couldn't go anywhere <laughs> one society one mountain and the water started rising. The mountain started sinking, the hot spot, and the bubble that was there that would have pushed it up started to be released. The lava flowed in other places. And the mantle of the earth is that way. Slowly the mountain sank, and the Lemurians became seafaring. And now this dear ones is where it gets good <laughs> the currents of the ocean are shaped mainly from the topography of the mountains underneath the water to this day you can see those currents much the same as they always were for those mountains are the same as they always were they are a result of millions of years of the way the mantle moves around understood today as plate tectonics creating the mountains and the valleys underneath the ocean and the currents that are there not always created from the water cycle but in a combination of the temperatures of warm and cold of seasons and also of the canyons underneath they create currents from one place to another and they remain to this day. When the Lemurians were in trouble and they didn't know if their islands were sinking underneath the ocean or not, many, many of them took to the ocean. <laughs> and the currents led them right here. Right here. Not to the continent, slightly to the left. <laughs> but here. And if you want to take a look at the anthropology, if you want to take a look at those things which would prove this, there was purpose here. Oh, they were not the first to come here. Indeed, you were visited by, the, by what you would call the Aborigine. It's not that far away. But it's harder to get here because the currents don't support it. There was never the foothold here that there was in Australia. It came and went. It never caught on until the Lemurians arrived with their society. Developed they were, harmonious they were. There are five places on this planet where the Lemurians ended up. Hawaii is one, New Zealand is two, Easter Island is three. I will not give you the other two yet. This is a part of Lemuria. And it lasted for thousands of more years, 20,000 more years in this place. And it didn't develop into hundreds and hundreds of tribes and languages. The fragmentation was not nearly as grand or great. And the proof of it, look at the indigenous here, for they are Polynesian. <laughs> the currents brought them here study the currents you'll see them they still will and that is the story we wanted to tell you now, how does this story end there is no ending 
There is something different here. And you know it. If you live here, you know it. If you study that which the indigenous of this land would release to you, they'll tell you there's prophecy. They will tell you of a part that New Zealand might play in something far grander than you can think of. That's their prophecy. Developed through harmony. For you will note that this group that you call indigenous is more developed than some of the others. More ready, perhaps, to include you as an outsider in the creation story of who they are, where they've been, where they've come from. Anointed and blessed and appropriate in every way. And that is who seeded this land. This land has not seen the wars others have. There's a purity here and there's a freshness here even to this day. There's Lemurian energy here. And you ought to take a moment and celebrate it. Now, why do I bring you this? I want you to know who you are. For sitting in the chairs are what are called New Zealanders. You think there's a reason why you're here? Perhaps not all of you were born here, but some of you were pulled here. And you stayed. And you wouldn't be any other place. And I'll tell you why. Because you are Lemurian. And you are your own ancestors. Oh, the skin may be a different color. And the features may be different, but so it is in the Akash. You know, you're not born into the same race every single time. You've always been here. And doesn't it feel like it? When you go and stand on the shore, doesn't it feel like it? Can you remember the journey? No, you can't. But I'll tell you who you are. Laborian. Part of the seeds of the land. Maybe it's time to celebrate it. profound it is, old soul, that you find yourself in this particular room listening to your own story, knowing that there is purpose behind your life and that you continue to hold the light and the land that you, that you came to. Precious it is, appropriate it is, that you would find yourself here yet again. When there comes a time when you pass to the other side of the veil, I will tell you what you're going to do. Because the potentials are there, Laborian. And you'll say, take me back to New Zealand. And the child will be born yet again to a family of your choice. And here you will be holding the land yet for another generation. Because it's what you do. Those who are the oldest of souls will find themselves in a meeting like this, grandly esoteric, perhaps unbelievable, but whose energy is precious, safe, sweet, loving, and accurate. And you can feel it. Go inside. Challenge yourself. Is it true? Did this happen in this fashion? Could it be that I've always been here? Could it be that I am part of a grander story? Could it be there's something in this place that will happen. There's harmony here. There's sweetness here. It is palatable. And the land speaks of it. And for the rest of you, including my partner, who is not included in this, can you celebrate it as appropriate, as correct, answer is yes. And so we are family, are we not? The crying has never been human. 
I've always been on the other side of the veil. I've always been in support. Helped to set the magnetic grid of the planet, I did. With some of you standing next to me, I did. And I celebrate you. There's a shift happening. We'll talk about that tomorrow night. What are you going to do with this information? What if all you did was to understand, absorb, love yourself a little more for this? What if it made you a little grander Then the entire purpose for my visit has been accomplished? For you will see yourself a little bigger than you did an hour ago. Perhaps you'll consider the possibilities of who you've been, old soul, and what you've done on this planet. And that's why we love you the way we do. There is far more here than meets the eye. Far more.